Nigeria's gross domestic product for the second quarter of 2016, as reported by the National Bureau of Statistics, declined by over 2% in real terms. Also, in the first quarter of the year, the Bureau records that almost 80,000 jobs were created. That's 83% lower than the over 420,000 jobs created in the previous quarter. Now, with these statistics, many economists were not surprised when the Bureau released figures capturing the state of the economy as at the first quarter of 2016, indicating that Nigeria is in recession. How is this playing out in the different sectors of the economy? And and how can the country get out of it? Let's talk about this on this episode of Big Story. I'm Amy Thompson. News headlines have not been pleasant. If the opinion on economic situation in Nigeria was divided before now, the report of the National Bureau of Statistics on the second quarter performance of the economy put an end to that. Capital import into the country for the second quarter of 2016 is estimated at almost $650 million, representing a fall of 8.98% when compared to the first quarter. Even the export trade, which increased to about 1.9 trillion naira, representing a change of about 726 billion naira over the preceding quarter, was largely because of the depreciation of the naira although it reduced the trade deficit in the quarter. The interpretation of the fact that the economic indices of the country has remained in the negative for two consecutive quarters is that Nigeria is in recession, and it's not just on paper. The food market shows signs of it. This food, tomato, rodo, tetazer, and other, and other things, it's very difficult to see somebody come by enough. Just... Even you see, say, the market day cheap, the price day cheap, but you see somebody, people come by the market as it, as it did like before. You know they easy to buy the market. And this, according to Mr. Mohammed, is in spite of constant supply from the farmers. When you travel to the north, you will see a lot of uh, farm, and the farm, the day okay. But the price, that might be the problem. Farm, people don't go farm well, well in, the, in the farm. But the price, the price of the market, now be the they costly. Everything they you do, double the price. So the way they buy last year is not be like this year. So the farm is okay because we have enough farm in the market, and the in the north enough enough goods in the market. But to get money to buy, it is difficult. Unemployment figures from the National Bureau of Statistics has also been negative as it places the number of people who lost their jobs between May 2015 to August 2016 at about 4.6 million. The financial sector seemed to be the worst hit with the disengagement of members of staff of major banks in the country. At some point, the federal government had to intervene. We have virtually 80% of the banks involved in this particular crisis. We have cases of those who have been laid off without proper redundancy discussions. It is also very unjust and unfair. Although it seemed the intervention reduced the massive sack in the industry, there were still rumors of quiet disengagement of staff. However, the industry on the spotlight recently has been the aviation. First Nation and Area Airline had announced suspension of its operations. This could leave over 2,000 Nigerians without a means of livelihood, and they did not stay quiet. Aero Contractors Management, in conjunction with AMCON, um, have turned out to slaves in our own country, Nigeria. Um, whether we like it or not, aviation workers are workers with high sense of dignity, and any attempt for aero workers, aero management to depict us as down, the downtrodden will definitely be rejected by the entire labor force in Nigeria. The airlines say challenges such as high cost of aviation fuel and operations deter their work. And this affects even those who have not taken the drastic measure of shutting down. The challenges of uh, double taxation, 
um, fear all over the world, fear, the prices of fear um, have come down. In Nigeria, the prices have uh, spiraled up four times. So those are very, very debilitating uh, challenges. And at the same time, poor airport infrastructure. In Nigeria, we don't have uh, opportunities of night flying, so your aircraft is on ground most of the time. Once again, the federal government had to wade into the matter with promises to collaborate with others concerned to make things bearable in the industry. Uh, major concerns that they have had been addressed. Um, we've heard that they've been bringing engines into the country uh, without paying a dime, and then the airplanes are, uh, are working, and most seats are there up in the sky. Uh, to the challenges with um, uh, jet fuel, uh, we've discussed collectively, one, the sector is fully deregulated. You know, um, you can't eat your cake and then expect it on the dinner table again. But uh, having said that, we have the duty to get in there and see what we can do, including uh, making sure that the product is first available. And I believe it is availability or non-availability that's making carriers to have to go to another country and take the fuel. Because it does not make any economic sense that for you to fly uh, three hours, 15 minutes into Ghana and out before you continue your journey to, to Dubai. You can't burn three hours of jet time out of an eight hour flight to Dubai and still make money. It's just that because the product is not available, that's why. And then also availability is tied down to the amount of forex and that is available for you to import this uh, product itself. It's just like what is happening in the whole economy. And this Forex, of course, um, Nigeria do not have at the moment. We are going through trying times. Um, we're making um, $300 million a day before by selling 2.2 million barrels a day uh, um, um, at 140. And today we are doing 800,000 barrels a day at uh, uh, 3740. The numbers are there, so it's 10% of what we're doing. It's about $30 million. And the demands are, are high. We don't um, manufacture and export uh, things out of the country. We consume everything. So the demands on Forex is extremely very high. There are critical sectors also that need this money. But again, uh, within the smallness of an eye, they say the cataract will still find a space uh, to exist. So we will try as much as possible to see within the limits, uh, limited available um, uh, Forex, the airlines are getting something. I had been to Central Bank, I had been to uh, Finance, they're getting something. It's not enough, they will get more. By God's grace, we'll make a case for the aviation sector. The minister says there's a bigger plan to make things even more stable by upgrading the airports in the country through concessioning. By concessioning, it means that somebody will come and take the airport, build a fantastic uh, edifice there that will make you want to go to the airport and live there. And then he, he makes money over 20 years. During the 20 years, he will be giving us some money. And later, he brings back the asset back to Nigerian people. And that is concessioning. And that is different from privatization. And it means more jobs. Because the bigger the airport is, the more capacity it has to do businesses, the more shops that are opening, the more people that are employed. As expected, if the aviation sector is having hitches, then businesses related to the industry would feel the pinch. Travels and tours is one of such. Uh, we have clients who do not have the purchasing power anymore to buy the kind of packages, tickets, travels they usually do. And so business is slowed down. Um, people are making new choices and looking at priorities. You know, do I need to spend X, Y, Z amount on this leisure trip or this business trip? And when things like this happen, you find out that for businesses like this, uh, you don't get the kind of patronage you, you need to sustain the business. And when you don't get the patronage, it eventually tells on the business because there is no profit to make. This eventually affects the entire business. I, I think for most of us, uh, and I will use myself for an instance, you know, when we look at what we did between uh, January and August for 2016, and then we compare it to what we did in the years past. Um, I think for a lot of us, we haven't even done 10% of whatever it is we did between the same time frame, looking at the years past. So if I say I haven't done 10% of what I did between the same time frame last year, I think that tells a whole lot of stories.